I'm gonna show you how to get perfect motion tracking in After Effects and how AI fits in as the final creative layer. Let's dive into it. So we all know that AI can create some pretty crazy VFX, but sometimes your characters, your scene, or even your camera movement doesn't quite match up and you don't get the creative control. So today, we're gonna focus on the main backbone of any good VFX shot, motion track. All right, so first we're gonna start in After Effects. So I have my After Effects open here and I'm going to import my clip. And this is just something I recorded with my Osmo Pocket. This is just a pan shot of me walking in the woods. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna motion track my shot here because there is some motion to it. So with my clip selected, I'm gonna go to Animation, Track in Boris FX Mocha. I'll click on the Mocha icon and then Mocha is gonna pop up. And if I preview my clip here, so where I stop is basically where I want my fountain of youth to end up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the XSplane tool and I'm gonna start at the end. And I'm just gonna create a selection there and I'm gonna enable perspective even though it's kind of a flat planar shot. And under surface, I'm gonna click on show surface and align surface so it aligns with the proportions of the composition. From here, I'm gonna track backwards and you see the track is staying put nicely, which is good. So that looks pretty good. From here, I'm gonna save that. I'll close out of Mocha. And then back in After Effects, I can just click on Create Track Data, and I'll put a pin in that for now. So now that we have our video motion tracked, I'm gonna bring a frame from After Effects into Photoshop using Generative Fill to create our Fountain of Youth. Let's see. So from here, I'm going to go to Composition, Save Frame As, File, and this is just gonna create a Photoshop version of this exact frame. So now I'm gonna use Generative Fill to kind of create my fountain of youth here. So I'm gonna use my Selection Lasso tool, and I'm just gonna select most of the area on camera right, camera right. and I'll click on Generative Fill. So here I'm just gonna paste in my prompt that ChatGPT was nice enough to help me with, and I'm gonna hit Generate. And after a few generations, this is what I ended up going with. So if I save that as a PSD, just save that project, and I'll go ahead and import my PSD. I'm gonna import that as a composition. And then I'm just gonna drag that composition into my main composition. And you see it fits perfectly, it lays in there really nicely. And the only thing is, it's not motion tracked. So luckily, I have my bottom layer with my tracking data that's already created. And then I'm gonna go to Layer Export 2, and I'll select my top layer. Then I'll hit Apply Export. Now you see when I move my timeline here, this looks really good. And you see here it's tracked really nicely thanks to my Mocha settings. So now some of you would say project is done, but from here, you could actually take it a little bit further. Um, if you wanted to animate this within After Effects, you could add some ripple effects and some moving water to this. You could use some simulation effects. So I know everybody doesn't have the runway subscriptions and the mid-journey subscriptions and all these AI tools at their disposal. So I'm gonna show you how to do this if let's say you just had the Creative Cloud subscription at your disposal and maybe some other tools as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open back up my still frame PSD project in Photoshop. So this is my scene in Photoshop. You can see I have it in different layers. This is my top layer, this is my bottom layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go to layer, merge visible, and I'm gonna take myself out of this. I'm gonna delete it, hit generate to fill, and this is just gonna remove me from the scene. And now from here, what I can do is I can actually edit the scene a little bit more if I want to. Like, let's say I wanted to make this a much bigger waterfall. I can kind of do a rough selection here. Okay, so that looks really good. I might go with that one, see what else we got. That's really nice. All right, so I'm actually gonna go with this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna export this as a JPEG. So then from here, I'm gonna go to my image to video tool. So you could use Runway, Mid Journey has one now, Hail UO, Kling, whatever you decide to use, you can go ahead and use it. All right, so I'm gonna use Runway for this one. So I'm gonna go to Generate Video, and I'm gonna upload that waterfall shot there. And I'll drop that same prompt as I have there. And I'll make sure in the beginning that I put Static Shot 
And I'll generate that and we'll see what it comes up with. All right, so let's preview this. What do you know? There's camera movement. Runway doesn't quite listen to you. So one thing that I've kind of discovered that if I change this from Gen 4, I go to previous models and I go to Gen 3 Alpha Turbo, and I go over to camera control, I can click on static camera. And if I generate it, this is what it'll come up with. So it's kind of what I was looking for. I'm gonna upscale this to 4K. And once that's upscaled, I'll download that and let's bring it into After Effects. All right, so now back in After Effects, I'll import my clip from Runway. And luckily I already have a pre-comp with my fountain. And all I really have to do is import that into my pre-comp. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll make sure everything's kind of lined up because sometimes Runway scales it a little bit differently. So from here, I can go ahead and create just a rough mask as I did before. I could feather that a little bit. All right, so that's pretty much it. To add some finishing touches, I added a few more generative fill elements and added them to my motion track scene as I showed you before. Here's the final result.